Bruce Wick from uh, New Legs, so we'll play. driving the uh, Hurtful and the Dome. 1968 Hurst Olds. And look at this beast. This car is everything that's right with drag racing. It makes my pants tight. This was a collaboration between Oldsmobile and Hurst with the cars collected and then sent to Demer Engineering for conversion. They were outfitted with this absolutely gorgeous Peruvian silver and black color scheme. And under the hood is a fire breathing monster. 455 cubic inches. But what a lot of people don't realize is that there were actually two different 455 engines used in the Hearst Olds that year. The first engine, coined the W46, is what you got when you ordered it with air conditioning. It's a good engine, sea casting heads, slightly mild cam, and a 735 CFM quadrajet. And then there's the cars without air conditioning, which received the W45. We're talking decasting heads from the W30, the 308 cam from the W31, and a 750 CFM quadrajet. Compression ratio is the same for both engines at 10 and a half to one, and oddly enough, they were both rated the same horsepower. 390, and hold on to your hat. 500 pound-feet of torque. Looking at the engine, you might think that the owner painted it the wrong color. I mean, why isn't it bronze like the 400 in the 442? Actually, this is the correct color. Oldsmobile did that on purpose because they wanted to set it apart from the 400. They wanted people to take one quick glance under the hood and know that the Hurst Olds is something special. Same thing with those red fender wells, but those would change for 1969. Being a Hurst Olds, inside you'll find a Hurst dual gate shifter, and that attaches to a turbo 400 three-speed automatic that has been specially calibrated for this application. Though there was at least one four-speed car that left Demer Engineering. 308 gears were standard in the Hurst Olds equipped with air conditioning, while 391 were in the cars without. This one has something in the middle, and it should pair very well with that 455 V8. 342 gears. The 68 Hurst Olds was a rather well-equipped car from the factory. It had a rear anti-roll bar, boxed rear lower control arms, power front disc brakes, a heavy-duty radiator, and even with all of that, it was still rather lightweight. This car with driver came in at 3,790 pounds. Not bad. And then we get to the price, and this Hurst Olds was not a cheap car when it was new. The base 442 started out at 3,150 bucks, and the Hurst Olds package was 1,000. $161. It gives you an absolute cheapest total of $4,311, and adjusting for inflation, that's $34,432, making this one of the more expensive muscle cars featured on the channel. At a price like that, you'd think that Oldsmobile would have a hard time selling the Hearst Olds. Nope, they didn't. Within days, they had thousands of orders. Obviously, Demer Engineering wasn't going to be able to crank out that many cars, but they were able to produce 515 that year. Of that, 464 were holiday coupes like our featured car. You wanna know how fast this car runs? Well, let's check out an original review from Car and Track. We really wound this silver screamer again and again. Our best zero to 60 run was 5.3 seconds. The fastest quarter mile time was 13.24 at 107 miles an hour. And no matter how you slice it, that makes the Hurst Olds a going Jesse. I'm a fan of those old school reviews. That music is on par. Let's check out the opponent. Okay, let's watch a little bit more of that review first. In high speed cornering, you can steer it through with the accelerator. But don't back off too fast or she'll leave you like this. All the suspension in. 1972 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. The Super Duty 455 wouldn't come out for another year, but for 1972, Pontiac made the 455 HO work just fine in the Trans Am. We're talking an aluminum intake manifold, a Ram Air 3 068 high lift cam, free flow exhaust, and a special set of 1972 only oval port heads with massive 111 cc chambers. Compression ratio is only 8.4 to 1, but this thing was still able to put out 300 net horsepower 
and 415 pound-feet of net torque. Extremely impressive numbers for 1972. Inside, you'll find Pontiac Wet Dream Fuel, that being a four-speed manual, and out back, 342 gears were standard, but this one has a tasteful upgrade to a set of 373 rear gears. The Trans Am for 1972 wasn't exactly the lightest car. This one with driver is 3,864 pounds. The 72 Trans Am started out at $4,256, which interestingly was actually cheaper than the previous year. Adjusting for inflation, that's around $28,378 today. Obviously, Obviously, most of these cars came with some options that would have increased that price, but technically you could get one for that cost. Production was limited in 1972 because of a UAW strike, and with that, there were only 1,286 Trans Am cars produced, and if you break that down, only 458 had the four-speed. Car and Driver magazine tested a Trans Am in 1972. It ran 0 to 60 in only 5.4 seconds, and the quarter mile in a blistering 13.90 seconds at 104.6 miles per hour. That's pretty darn impressive for any muscle car, but extremely impressive for 1972. Let's see what these cars will do today. Huh? At the time of filming, the temperature was 71 degrees, humidity 55%, elevation 954 feet, and the barometric pressure was 29.32 inches. Let's see what happens in the first round. So Luke, Luke Cruiswick from uh, New Legs, driving the uh, Hurtful. And the first round turned out to be an absolute nail-biter with the Hurst Olds taking home the win, running 12.91 seconds at 106.26 miles per hour. Meanwhile, in the other lane, the Trans Am was hot on its tail and catching up real quick, running 12.93 seconds at 111.01 miles per hour. Let's see if that Pontiac can redeem itself in round two. Yeah. Okay, here's Luke Cruiswick. Who is uh, 68 years old, going against this 1972 Pontiac Trans Am. Available only in white or blue. You see the blue one here in the web. Once again, we have an extremely close race, and the Hurst Olds takes home the win, running 13.03 seconds at 106.01 miles per hour. In the other lane, the Trans Am looked good, but not quite good enough for the win, running 13.06 seconds at 110.61 miles per hour. A huge thanks to both of the owners for bringing out these cars. It was absolutely awesome seeing them on the drag strip. I'll catch you guys at the next one.